What is going on everyone and welcome back to another new comic book day top 10 list. Today I'm going to be ranking reviewing all the books that I picked up for February 1st 2023's new comic book day. Man the indies are killing it. They are at the top of the food chain for new comic book day. They came out with some absolute bangers this week. Today's episode I'm going to be going over books from Marvel, Image, AWA, Upshot, Ablaze, Dark Horse, and IDW. Like I said I've got some really good books to go over today and as always as I begin to talk about these comics just be aware that there are going to be spoilers. I get very excited talking about them. But when I start to go over the actual issue, I put a little spoiler tag down below in the corner to give you a heads up that the spoiler is about to happen. And now without further ado, everyone, let's talk some comics. So for this week's new comic book day, I picked up a total of 13 issues, so you know what that means. Three of them obviously didn't make this week's top 10 list, I'm going to be talking about these books first. They are in no particular order, and the first one that I'm going to be going over today is Marvel's. We've got Venom, issue number 16. This is cover A, and it's also a dark web event issue. And a lot of people are actually commenting in the previews episode, seeing if I was going to be picking up Venom, issue number 16, if I was going to be reviewing it or not. Turns out it was still in my pull box, so I was obviously going to grab it. I wasn't going to put it back on the shelf. But I'm going to be real with you guys, I'm not going to be getting too in-depth with this one, because a lot of it just just truly didn't make sense to me because I'm not reading the dark web event. A lot of stuff feels as though it was coming from that event. They had some characters tied into it. And like the last issue, I honestly just felt really lost. I didn't jump into that event. I figured it was just going to be a cash grab. But now after this issue, I really wish I was reading it. And plus, I've heard from a lot of people it's actually pretty good. A little bit about this issue, there was a ton of action. We've still got Dylan, Codex. We've also got Normie doing a lot of action in it as well. And we still have Bedlam, kind of Eddie Brock doing their thing. Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan made an appearance in it too. But like I said, tons of action going on. But that's pretty much why I'm going to leave it at that because I can't really give a true opinion on it because I'm not reading the dark web Event. If you're reading it and enjoying it, let's talk about it more down below. Maybe you can fill me in on some of the stuff that I missed out on. Next one that I'm going to be going over today is also from Marvel. We've got their brand new one, Silver Surfer Ghost Light, issue number one. This is one of the varying covers. I was really looking forward to this one. I've been itching just for some Silver Surfer, and I feel like I haven't really read anything with Silver Surfer since Silver Surfer Black. Wasn't a big fan of that series, but like I said, I was really hyped up for this one. So right off the bat, we get introduced to Tony, who seems like she's going to be our main character in this series, and she has this reoccurring dream of this shining man. It's just a dream that she tells herself, and then the rest of the issue is like a regular day, and to be honest, I found it quite boring, and the artwork was okay as well. We learn the family just moved to Sweetwater, and they are still adjusting to their new lives. The house was actually given to them that they moved into because their Uncle Val vanished and was deemed dead, so they took the opportunity to start a brand new life. We eventually learn that Uncle Al had a secret lab, and it turns out that the Shining Man is actually real. So as I said before, I thought this first issue was pretty boring, and honestly, because the artwork was just okay, it was a pretty tough issue to get through in my opinion. It was extremely dialogue heavy with, I think, zero action happening in it, and the dialogue itself just, to me, it felt very irrelevant. It seemed like it didn't really matter towards the character or plot developments. Just my opinions though, but for all those reasons, I'm probably not going to be continuing on with this series. I was really hyped up for a new Silver Surfer series, but I'm probably just going to read it all in a trade paperback form, or just grab all the back issues once the series officially releases. And now now on to this final one that did not make this week's top 10 list. It's another brand new series, but we've got a new one coming up from Image. It's Blood Tree, issue number one. This is cover A. I didn't really know what I was going to be getting into with this one, but a brand new Image series. I knew it was kind of more of a detective mystery series, so I thought to myself, why not grab it? It's right up my alley. It's definitely the stuff that I kind of like. Another issue that I found extremely boring in my opinion though. So this issue starts off introducing us to Detective Azaro, and like most detective series, there's a crime to be solved. He's got some odd ones to figure out because he's got two dead bodies with angel wings that are surgically attached to the victims. The rest of the issue is spent with them finding clues and putting the pieces together as to what correlation do these victims have. We get glimpses at who the murderer is and it seems as though it's going to be taking some sort of religious route for the killer's motives. So I know I just got done saying that this first issue was a little bit more more on the boring side, but to be clear, I don't exactly know how I felt about this first issue. I mean, it really wasn't bad, but at the same time, it really wasn't good either. I like detective comics, I like the mystery behind it all, and I know it's going to be a little bit more of a slow burn, but to me, one of the things I didn't like about it was that we didn't really get an introduction to our main character, the detective. They just kind of jumped right into it and kind of expected the readers to like this character, and we're going to see how that goes. I'm going to continue on with the series, but I think one thing that truly irked me about this first issue, I know it's probably just me, but I feel as though our main character the detective his expressions didn't change throughout the entire comic every single panel didn't matter the situation he had the same exact expression on his face i don't know if that was just me that noticed it. i want to hear your pins on down below but now let's jump into the real top 10 list 
All right, here we go, everyone. Kicking this top 10 list off first. We've got coming in at number 10. We've got Images, brand new one, Almighty, issue number one. This is cover A. So I didn't exactly know what I was going to be getting into with this series, but I showed up at my LCS, and they had a brand new number one Image title sitting on the rack, and I thought to myself, there's no way that I'm turning down a number one from Image. It seems as though it's going to be another post-apocalyptic, futuristic story. And at this point, we've got a ton of them on the market. And I'm trying not to make comparisons because I do really like this type of series. But I mean, last week we had once upon a time at the end of the world and there's just so many other ones as well so i think that's where i'm having some issues with this series to me so like i just got done saying we've got a brand new futuristic and apocalyptic series from image and right off the bat we get introduced to dell and she's going to be one of our main characters she's been stolen and our issue starts with her on the run trying to escape from her kidnappers the issue doesn't give us many details or backstory on the characters or pretty much what happened it just jumps straight into the action she gets saved by fail another one of our main characters it seems and she remains a mystery in this first issue. But whatever her story is, her whole purpose was to actually save Dell and take her home to safety. Obviously, the people are upset that Dell escaped, so they're basically trying to find her and fail throughout the entire issue. This was another issue that I wasn't too certain about when I was done reading it. While I did think the artwork was fantastic and the storytelling was pretty good too, like I was saying, there are a ton of futuristic apocalyptic stories on the market right now, and what is going to make this one stand out from the other ones? I'm definitely going to continue on with it, but I want to hear your opinions on it down below, and for those reasons, we've got coming in at number 10 this week, we've got Image's brand new one, Almighty, issue number one. Now we've got coming in at number 9 this week, this is Images, Radiant Black, issue number 21, this is cover A. This is another series I just constantly keep going back and forth on. Do I like the series? Do I want to keep going with the series? Do I just wait to read it in the trade paperback? Every time I feel like I read a couple issues where I'm like, this is really good, it just gets tremendously boring. And I thought the way that the last issue left us off, this was going to be the start of a brand new arc, but it was kind of more of a standalone issue and I thought it was actually really well done. So Nathan, Marshall, and the world is still trying to figure out what's going to happen next after that giant robot came crashing onto Earth, causing all of that chaos. To me, I'm not usually a fan of standalone issues or one-shots that are in the middle of just an ongoing series, but I really like this one. I think they did a fantastic job with it. To me, it felt like it had a nice, complete beginning, middle, and end to the plot. The Radiant Yellow character makes a small appearance as well, and while his appearance was only a small one, his role in this issue was very significant. The info that he told Nathan and Marshall was very big going forward with the story. So from there, this issue's focus turns to the character Shift, and if you don't recall who that is, that's kind of like the neon green type of character. He does a lot of bad things, but taking him down is extremely important to the overall story, according to our Radiant Yellow character. Not only is he selling weapons, but stopping him will buy everyone some more time before the big war on Earth happens. The issue was very dialogue heavy with some character introductions, but mainly them working on a plan, figuring out their next steps. This was not a bad issue by any means, but like I just got done saying, I am very back and forth on this series. Sometimes I really like the arcs, and all of a sudden, it is a snooze fest for a very long time. I mean, we're 21 issues deep, and they've been talking about some of these characters and just this big war since almost the very beginning, and it feels as though we haven't really made any progress towards that just yet. In my opinion, I am going to be continuing on this series, but I truly do think it's going to be way better read at once in a hardcover format. So for those reasons, we've got coming in at number nine this week, we've got Images, Radiant Black, issue number 21. Next up on my list this week, we've got coming in at number 8, this is Marvel's Miles Morales Spider-Man, issue number 3, this is cover A. You guys already know I am a huge fan of the character Miles Morales, he's one of my favorite Marvel characters, and the last volume done by Salon and Amon was hands down one of my favorite ongoings at the time from Marvel. I loved the first two issues of this series, and I thought to me, while it was still a good issue, this was probably my biggest letdown issue of the week. I was really excited for it, I was excited to get some more info about Ranim, and we did, but... Her motives, her motives are an absolute joke, and to me, they don't really make much sense. I felt like reading the rest of the issue, I was kind of laughing at it, like, man, come on, none of this stuff is really just that big of a deal anymore. So this issue really focuses on Ranim and kind of her origin story, and I think they actually did an excellent job with her origin story, and I know you're saying, AR, you just got done laughing about the issue, saying it was an absolute joke. Well, let me get to that in just a second. They did a great job talking her up, showing her upbringing, talking about her family, and it really just brought her in as a character. It made me actually feel for her, which leads us to what her motives are, which to me don't really make a lot of sense. And if you can't already tell, a lot of this issue just focuses on Ranim and what her motives are. So obviously she was trying to get into the Visions Academy like Miles Morales did. She happened to be one number off on the ping pong ball that he ended up winning, getting accepted into the Academy. And she is just super upset about it and she is not having it. And because she feels like she's this really smart 
girl and entitled to everything that she just deserves this place at Brooklyn Visions and Miles didn't really deserve it and that's why she is now coming after Miles and his friends and family and I don't know to me it just felt very silly and as soon as I read that was her motive it just kind of took away from the rest of the issue because she's extremely smart she's a very badass character and I like the things that she's doing she just brings this new element to the series but at the same time I don't know. It just kind of takes away from her overall character that she's just this jealous girl that feels as though that she deserves it, but instead Miles got it. That aside, I still love the artwork. I still love the action. Love the character development that is happening in this series, and so far, Ziggler is doing a fantastic job on it. I just kind of wish maybe they elaborate on it a little bit more later in the series, but as of now... I don't know, her kind of just motives just aren't there for me. Come on now, I can't be the only one that thinks her motives are just downright silly. I mean, she's just jealous, that's all it is. She doesn't feel that he deserves it while she does deserve it. Newsflash, there's a lot of people that deserve a lot of things in this world and nobody gets what they deserve. It's just one of those things. So for her to just be this big bad super villain, I don't know. Just my take on it, I would love to hear your opinions on it down below. And for those reasons, we've got coming in at number 8 this week, we've got Marvel's Miles Morales Spider-Man, issue number 3. Next up at number seven, we've got AWA's brand new one, Black Tape. Issue number one, this is cover B. Real quick before I get into this issue, if you are not on the AWA train yet, you have absolutely got to change that. They have got so many bangers out and they've got trade paperbacks out with their complete series in them. There's no reason that you cannot get caught up on some of their series. A lot of the times they're only four, five, sometimes six issue miniseries and they just pack so much info and action into them. They're truly all fantastic. I can't recall a series that I honestly just didn't enjoy from AWA. WA. Now, for this issue, it kind of reminded me of their last newest one. I believe it was called Trojan, where you're reading the entire issue. A lot of it doesn't really make sense. You don't know the motives behind these characters. And all of a sudden, at the very end, you're like, whoa, so that's where they're going with this one? That's exactly how this one was. This first issue didn't really dive too much into the main plot of the story, but they did such a sensational job developing our main characters and making us really feel for them. Jack, our main character, was a rock and roll legend. His music was great and everybody loved him but he sadly passed away and that's what this first issue is primarily dealing with his wife Cindy is upset and she's got a funeral to deal with Jack's record label team and everyone else that's reaching out to her Jack seemed to literally know everyone, but there's a lot of unfamiliar faces to Cindy as well. At the funeral, when they all gathered back at her house, there's a lot of people that she didn't recognize. Now, as we reach the end of the issue, this is like I said before, like Trojan, we learn Jack may have had some other secrets and was into some sort of evil cult or just devil worshipping. This was a very solid first issue, and I'm so excited to see where they go with it. I love the artwork, I love the storytelling, by the end of the issue, they really made us feel for the main characters. Now, whether or not Jack is alive or he plays a significant role in this series, his actions that led to his death or supposed death is going to be playing a role going forward. I'm pumped for it, and for those reasons, we've got coming in at number seven this week, we've got AWA's brand new one, Black Tape, issue number one. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I just got done hyping up that last issue. This week was so good for new comic book day. I mean, sure, we had some stinkers here and there, but for the most part, I was very impressed with this week's books. They were all so good, in my opinion. But for now, we've got coming in at number six this week. This is Marvel's Moon Knight issue number 20. This is cover A. This is the start of a brand new arc, and I know I've been very back and forth on this series. I love the beginning of it when he was more of a detective. He's out solving crimes and just finding clues and stuff like that. Once we started hitting the teens, it turned into a little bit more of a story with the vampires, and I really wasn't a big fan of a lot of that stuff but now with this new arc it seems as though they're going back to the beginning of the series when he's doing more detective work and I am about it so now somebody is out hunting all of Moon Knight's former associates that were part of his shadow cabinet one by one they were being taken out by a mindless group under control of somebody named the ghost in the telephone we didn't get any sort of info about that being but the henchman did make a comment saying this has nothing to do with Moon Knight which is odd because it's all of his people being taken out this issue really did seem like a mystery with Moon Knight acting more as a detective and I loved it. There was some action, but overall not too much. Overall, this was one of my favorite Moon Knight issues that I've read in a very long time, and this issue right here got me excited to read the series again. McKay and his team did a wonderful job on this issue. I'm so pumped going forward. Let's talk about it more down below, and for those reasons, we've got coming in at number six this week, we've got Marvel's Moon Knight issue number 20. 
Here we go, everyone. We are down to the top five issues of the week. So coming in at number five, we've got Boom Studios, The Approach, issue number four. This is cover A. Woo, I am loving this series. They are doing a phenomenal job on it. This is the first issue of the series, in my opinion, that really kind of stepped towards more of a plot-driven issue. The last couple of issues, they just did a great job just building up the tension, the suspense, like where's this monster? Is it just lurking behind the corner? Is it going to kill off one of the main characters? But now with this one, I know it is the fourth issue, and I believe it's only a five issue miniseries but they kind of step towards more of that story and they really put their plan in motion my goodness this series is just so good the tension is really building up and they've done such a great job just creating a dark and creepy atmosphere in the book they created a plan in the last issue and now everything is being put into motion they know they need to blow up the terminal with the monster inside of it they have no other means of destroying this creature while they're getting the explosives ready remember that creepy old lady from the last issue and maybe the beginning issues as well well she's apparently been waiting all of these years for the monster to finally return. We're not sure of her role just yet, but she is trying to take care of this monster. And when they do finally find this monster, it was nuts. It's like cocooned and now it's growing. This is honestly a really fantastic series. I love the artwork, I love the storytelling, I love the atmosphere that the writers and the artists have created in this series, but in my opinion, as much as I do love it, like I said, I think it's only a five-issue miniseries, I would absolutely wait for a trade paperback or wait to find some of these in the dollar bins because they're pretty easy to get through. This is the first issue that felt very dialogue heavy in my opinion, while the other ones, they just did a great job building up the suspense. So read it all at once, enjoy it for what it is. I truly do really enjoy this series. And for those reasons, we've got coming in at number five this week, we've got Boom Studios, The Approach, issue number four. Now we've got coming in at number four this week. This is IDW's brand new one. We've got Breath of Shadows, issue number one. This is cover A. I had no idea what I was going to be getting into with this series, but I showed up in my LCS. I actually was really surprised that they had it. They typically don't get a lot of IDW stuff. And actually, moving forward, they're going to be carrying less and less indie titles. So that kind of sucks for me. I might have to actually take advantage of the pull list. I usually just show up and hope for the best. But man, this one was an absolute surprise to me. So we've got Jimmy Meadows, a rock and roll superstar, and he's the lead singer of his band. But he's got one big problem. He is a drug addict, which is obviously a thing for a lot of rock and roll superstars. He's hit a wall. He doesn't get along with his bandmates, and to be honest, it doesn't seem many people like him to begin with. Nobody can get through to him, but his manager has a plan. Deep in the jungles, there's a mysterious drug called El Peruwaka, and that's not only going to get Jimmy clean, apparently, but it's also going to open his mind to the truth and clear his head enough to put out the next big album. Album. The rest of the issue is then spent putting together a team to fly to Mexico to head into the jungles to try to find this drug. Overall, I think they did an excellent job with this first issue. They did a great job setting up the story. We really dove into who this main character is. We found that he's a rock and roll superstar. He's a drug addict. Nobody likes him. Seems to be his manager's the only one that does. And he wants to figure things out, get him clean, help them put out the next big album. But this drug, they don't know if it exists or not. So they head into this jungle. I don't know. It was a really good first issue. The artwork was great. and It was really creepy and weird as well. If you guys pick this one up, let's talk about it more down below. And for those reasons, we've got coming in at number four this week. We've got IDW's brand new one, Breath of Shadows, issue number one. Next up, we've got coming in at number three this week. This is Images, Nita Hawes, Nightmare Blog, issue number 12. This is cover A. Nita Hawes, Nightmare Blog fans, this is it. This is the issue that we have all been waiting for. They are finally going to be tying things together between this and Philadelphia. I am so excited. This is the end of the arc, and they did such a fantastic job wrapping everything up. So Nita is still hunting down Jackie in this issue, but it doesn't go down exactly how you'd be thinking. So she's been on a murdering spree, so you'd think there'd be some sort of big showdown, but instead we got something in my opinion so much better they shed a lot of light on nita's character no pun intended but apparently she is the child of light and she has a purpose for literally everything that's still a mystery but most of the issue was nita face to face with jackie and she was telling nita of her importance and how a nazi hasn't been completely truthful to her once a nazi had enough of jackie there was this little god versus demon fight but the focus remained on nita's newfound relevance and a nazi told her literally everything that she needed to hear so now she's finally going to be making her way to Philadelphia for the war. Man, this has got to be one of the best ongoing series from Image right now. Between this and Philadelphia, and the fact that they are finally bringing it together after us as fans have been waiting for this for quite some time now, I am so pumped to see what they do with it. This is such a great series. I highly, highly recommend checking this one out. And for those reasons, we've got coming in at number three this week. We've got Images, Nita Hawes, Nightmare Blog, issue number 12.
Here we go, everyone. We're down to the final two issues of the week. And let me tell you, I know I keep talking about it, but these two issues in particular, they were both so good and very hard to pick and choose who was getting number one and who was getting number two. But right now, we've got coming in at number two this week. We've got Dark Horse's brand new one. We've got Where Monsters Lie, issue number one. This is cover A. I didn't think my shop was going to have this issue, but when I did my previews video and I talked about this one, I told myself I'm really excited for this. If my shop doesn't have it, I'm going to have to get it online or I'm going to have to find it somewhere else. But man, this this one, while I thought it was going to be good, was actually a lot better than I was expecting. Right off the bat, we get screaming kids running from a house, and we quickly learn that the entire neighborhood is filled with killers. You see, some of the kids get murdered, but this is important to the story because one of them actually makes it out alive. After that's all done with, we get introduced to Wilmhurst and all of its different masked murderers living in this secluded, gated community. While staying at Wilmhurst, they actually have a specific set of rules they have to follow. They all have a schedule, and they even have a monthly murder quota. The community has each other's backs and apparently everyone is safe while they're there. Nothing bad has apparently ever happened. That's a good portion of the issue, but the cliffhanger is that kid that escaped from the beginning of the issue. They brought cops to the community. I'm talking SWAT and it's going to be a massive shootout in this next issue. While I was really excited for this issue, I still didn't exactly know what to expect from it, but it was so much better than I was hoping for. The artwork was great, the first issue's storytelling was fantastic, and it even set up a cliffhanger leading into the next issue. Overall, this is a phenomenally well done book in my opinion. I know I'm a little bit biased, I'm a big fan of just monster, horror, just slasher stuff, just like that, but man... This one was so much fun. Definitely check it out if you had a little bit lighter of a week or if you're just a big horror fan. And for those reasons, we've got coming in at number two this week, we've got Dark Horse's brand new one, Where Monsters Lie, issue number one. All right, here we go, everyone. This is it, my number one read of the week. We've got coming in at number one. This is a Blaze's Children of the Black Sun, issue number two. This is the House of Slaughter variant. This was the only copy at my LCS. This is one I absolutely need to throw on my poll list. I love the first issue. I thought this was a fantastic follow-up. So this issue pretty much picks up where the last one left off, and this issue reveals the secret ability that the Children of the Black Sun carry. They did such a sensational job setting this one up, and they absolutely delivered by the end of it. I love this second issue. Our main character, Clementine, she's a child of the Black Sun. She's still trying to figure out her place in this world, and she's trying to make the best of it, because as you can recall from the last issue, they get treated differently, they don't get treated right, and a lot of people actually look down on them. The issue actually kind of has a lot of moving parts to it, and doesn't make complete sense until a little bit more more towards the middle, kind of pushing the end, but that older couple from the last issue, they fill the kids in on the secret that they have the ability to control people. Humans produce a signature vibration and the children of the Black Sun can not only mimic it, but they make the vibration stronger. Without spoiling it too much, we get to see the kids try to utilize their newfound powers and I really love their take on it. Guys, Children of the Black Sun, another bomb issue from Ablaze. The first one was great. This was a fantastic follow-up. The artwork... I talked to some people, they're not a big fan of the artwork. I do like it though, that's just my opinion, but it's the storytelling and just the way that they're setting up the story. I don't know what it is, but it's really just hitting home with me. I'm really enjoying what they're doing with it so far. And like I got done saying before, with the kids finding their new powers, it's a really nice take that they have on it. We've got one of the children, they're trying to use their powers for good, and the other one, they're using it for bad. So I'm just so excited to see where they go with this series. Let's talk about it more down below, but we've got absolutely taking the crown this week. At number one, we've got a Blaze's Children of the Black Sun, issue number two. And that's a wrap on this week's top 10 list of books, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to comment down below what your top read of the week was and which ones you think I missed out on. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to miss out on any of my upcoming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below with notifications turned on. You won't regret it. Now, I've got two more sitting off the side here with more of my comic book content. Click on one of those and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.